beats are the purest, roll it, roll it. These are the purest, roll it, roll it. Hello everybody, welcome on in to the Smelly Goonies podcast, episode 2, starring me, Booney, Panini, Real Dog, and special guest star is Nadir this week. Uh, we got ourselves a pretty packed slate. Hey, we have uh, some power rankings coming up, but the big one is the Hall of Fame inductee announcement towards the end of the podcast, so we'll make our way down there. Uh, that's about as good as your intro you're going to get me from Panini, so you can start. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so first off, this is the first time we've talked since the draft. What are your guys' like general takeaways of uh, like how you think the draft went? You guys I, feel like for... a lot of the t- I feel like a lot of the teams are close. Like It's hard to really easily say like last season you could tell like specific yeah. teams like oh you know then it was like hedgehogs tardigrades at least like at least some teams you're able to tell like these teams are gonna be really good but it's not as easy it seems this season i i think at least on paper they look uh pretty close um i don't think there are any bad teams either like last season there were like the sith i think we we knew pretty early that they were not going to finish very high um, but I don't think there's any teams really like that this season. I think a lot of them are pretty going to be pretty good. Yeah. I, I think one of the things also is if you look at last season, it was one of the, the closest seasons we've had in, in terms of how good the teams were comparative to each other. The circle just the of fact that we, we think the teams should be even closer this season, I think is a good thing. Yeah. I think the teams should be very well matched. Um, yeah. Do you guys have any like winners slash losers of the draft? Like, Who do you think is going to come out the strongest? That's more or less your power rankings, but oh. I definitely think uh, I'll just say I think that cat was a pretty big winner getting the the Chloe duo for two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, so, yeah, it was all me, Angel. Um, it was the Angel tax. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, do you just want to get right into the power rankings? We yeah, can we can go that Jackson, team by team. Got right on and Kevin again for like five hundred dollars. He got Kevin. It seemed like so. Yeah, it's kind of a win. We'll yeah. go to the power rankings and kind of discuss from there. Yeah, let's actually just jump right into it. Um, mm-hmm. so let me let me switch over to the power rankings here. Um, I I think it's it's gonna be I think we can split these up into tiers, but I think within the tiers it can there's a lot of uh, movement. 
Um, so in my opinion, I think Booney, you 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 hit one of them. I think that the uh, Jack team is going to be one of the S tier ones. Uh, do you guys also think they're going to be uh pretty good? I think it's tough to put teams in S tier in preseason, but they'll I, definitely uh, be like a top yeah. of a top of eight for me because again, Sidon and Kevin and Jack are a really strong core. He got sent to can fill kind of that tank slash support that they need. Uh, Dyer and Kathak, or I guess Kathak Kath got traded to the yeah. to for, Zen uh, for Raspberry. Raspberry. Yeah, to Raspberry, but I think yeah, that I... team overall is just a really solid roster. And plus, with Kevin being on an off roll, you can fit him in the SR cap. So I think the numbers are, like you said, a pretty good shout to begin with. So, Booty, I know you said you don't want to put anyone in the S. Um... Just because there's an S tier, I want to put someone in there. Was there any team you would put in S over the Nubbies? I can't really say for sure. The only one I can maybe think of is the Zenith, just because of all the star power they have. Oh. Uh, Nathan can play almost any tank in the game. Uh, Akua Kori DPS line is really scary. Frosty plays way above his SR. Yeah. And you got you got the legend of Ballsack Joe. So, I mean, <laughs> if, if any team is going to be in S tier on paper, it's going to be the Zeniths, but their biggest thing is can their mentals hold up with a few of their players. I won't name names, but yeah, I think I'll think I'll put them in, in S tier for now. We'll, we'll we'll look at it later too. Um, Nuttier, uh, who who's it? Who's who else are you looking for? Um, I got Oaks's team. Yep, yep. Redo raccoons. Yep. Um, I think the fact that they managed to pick up a forty one hundred tank for I think twenty seven thousand along it was, with this it was duo. A duo. Yeah, it was like a duo, and they were both four K. So I'm shocked that they were. Uh... Um, yeah, that's just like an absolute steal, and that let them basically pick up like really good value picks in like Tannic B and Roar for the other roles. Yeah. Um, and I think on paper the team looks really really solid, and it looks very flexible. Um. The one thing is this team's going to play a lot of Junker Queen. So they might, <laughs> depending on how the meta goes, if, if Junker Queen ends up being favorable, they, they could be really good. If Junker Queen gets like hard nerfed for whatever reason, they could take a tumble. But uh, on paper right now, they look really good. We have Scrim Bucks for them. They played pretty well. So I'm comfortable putting that team uh, area at the top of the uh, power rankings. They're number one on, on my power rankings. I so. also, I'm going to move them to number one. I personally have the number one. Um, I think that Numbies and the Zeniths both have like potential weaknesses I could see. Um, but I don't the Raccoons. I don't know if there is a single weakness on that team. I think it's stacked like the entire team. Like they're 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 I guess lowest SR player is Wiggle Higgle, and if Wiggle Higgle is your your worst player, that's really good. Yeah. Um, on the other side, do you guys have any uh C slash D tier teams? I have concerns about uh, the dongers from what I've heard from Scrim Bucks. I haven't personally scrimmed them, but from what I've heard in Scrim Bucks, they perhaps underperformed a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if anybody has heard about that, but this also can be equated to Vin learning mouse and keyboard. So yeah. he was, he's not probably mm -hmm. at his top. I think once he gets more comfortable, he is off rolling as well. So once he gets more comfortable in the off roll on top of the mouse and keyboard, I think that team will be able to come back up. Again, they're really based on a, a good Junker Queen Junker with Caber twenty seven and you know, Wrecking Ball is not an actual character in this game anymore, it seems. So I mean you gotta think about the the new patch a little bit, at least because you saw Doom got buff with yeah. the um and Doom's getting changes and I know Caber MJ, he's he plays three characters. Mainly two Doom now. Fist. Ball cut. It's it's Junker Queen, the Donger, and Doomfist. So it's not the worst look if you know if the Junker Queen isn't working out for them, they're able to go that Doomfist, which should look pretty good, I assume. Because I know that people like Red Cactus likes to play that Genji. Uh, it looks like, it, I just saw this in chat, since says Kevin's str scrim bucks are up. Um... Yeah. No bias there. <laughs> Never, ever. McCaffrey told yeah, security. I, just got, I know, I just got a pop-up. See if I go back. Booney, you you said uh, you said Vin's learning on Gaffy. keyboard, but uh, from what I've heard, I think he will be playing on controller for support for that team. He tried mouse and keyboard for the scrim; it didn't go well. No, he's back yeah. to controller. I think. Like, yep. I, I'm on, I'm going on one scrim. Both. I don't think you can really in precinct power put any teams in S or D tier. I think everybody's yeah. kind of up in the air. But if we're doing an S or a D, I'd probably put. Here, the I'll, dongers I'll, down in you know I, I think especially one scrim, if if it's your first scrim, doesn't mean much. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. 
We, you know what? We can have no Esther teams, but put the Dongers in D for Dong. D for Dong. And, <laughs> but they, they're technically a C tier team, but put them in D for Dong. Yep. Yes. Um, yeah. Another team, I know just out of the draft, I haven't really heard anything about the Scrimbucks or anything, but I have heard the general consensus is that the Imposters are going to be um, kind of struggling. Um, I so do you want to know, hot yeah. off the press Scrimbucks, yep. hot off the press right now, they scrimmed like two or three times. They just had a scrim last night against Inazuma, which went the way of the Inazuma pretty handedly in most of the maps. But um, literally frame one immediately after, after they lost, Frutals is like, guys, do we want to VOD review this? Because a lot of the team was was frustrated with how it went. And what they did was that they actually got Typhoon in. And, really? Yep. Typhoon's going to be like a coach for that team. and. If you didn't hear, Frutals got a wrist injury. I believe it was broken, oh, so he's man. not gonna have mandatory play time. Like That's he correct. said, he he played a map last night. He only played one map, and um, he felt fine after. But today his wrist hurt more. Just he thinks because of it. So you're not gonna really see him doing that. He's gonna be taking up that coach sort of look more so. And bro, they were vibing for two and a half hours. And they did a late scrim block at nine. Yeah. So uh, I love Titans of to... reviews. They're very uh, insightful. But I reviewed one map for them, and it took two hours. Yeah. I, from what I heard, I think they went through every map. Yeah. That they played. So and um, they're. It from what I heard, it's everyone on that team is really, really committed, like to adapting and going with how they want to do it, like. A lot of these players haven't played together. Like Yeet hasn't played with Raz, or Invictus, or and Jaggy's new Guku hasn't played with most of them. So they're committed right. to improving, and I can see them improving a lot with, if especially if they keep doing that. I would at the moment they'll put them in a C tier because you question, like who aside from aside from Yeet, who really plays like a dive character in that team? Guku, you know, Raz. Sure, Guku. Guku plays like. Tracer Genji. And then I know Invictus was playing does with Tracer play last at, night. You know, does he play at that high level to get them into beaters, what I'm saying? Because then you got oh, yeah. you know, Raz, who's kind of like an Ana expert. Moira is trying to learn Kiriko, but is still learning. You know, Invictus is always trying to learn Tracer. Is more mm -hmm. of that poke style. And again, like you said, a lot of them are kind of haven't really played with each other, so going into a dive-heavy meta, like we assume, I put Imposters in C tier right now. I could see them going up, but at the same time, at the moment, I put them in C. We need to see the results too. Yeah. To back it up, like from what we were expecting, I think that's fine. Uh, there's a, a lot of these teams down here. Like, I'm not sure exactly where they go relative to each other. Um, but yeah, I, these uh, what is the seven teams here? I feel like they're kind of in the middle. Um, are there any teams that you think stand out one way or the other from the last villains. seven teams? The villains. Where do you put them? I put I, I personally put them up by the Zenith, up by the numbies really? records. Yeah, I, I put them if their team oh, shows up. Definitely, if their team, I, shows, if their team, shows, team up, shows up. <laughs> so they, they were they scrimmed the imposters. I believe it was um a week ago, and I was just looking how they play. And I mean, they got a stack roster. They have Yo a lot of the time they have Yoda tank S Wrath Cupcake DPS Witherin Shifty support. So it's like. Everyone is pretty good. The only, like, the weakest person on that lineup right there is Shifty on, like, most likely the Lucio, and that's not a bad thing at all, like you're saying with Wiggle as well. It's just moving people around. So I feel like I, I'm, they're super, super good. I'm looking at their projected lineup right now. Um, would they be starting War or would they, would they be starting Shifty? Shifty, probably. Shifty. It, I mean, it depends be, on the map. Would that choice. be over SR? What? No. no, I don't know. So. Okay. No. Um, let the, me um, see. So the other thing that no, this team can do that I really think uh is really beneficial for them uh is they also have a second lineup that also looks really strong, where they can put Shifty on tank. Yeah. Right. Um, and move people around, and it can still be under SR and look really really strong. Because would that be Yoda um, DPS cupcake support then? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's I think that's what it is. Um, and that's thirty seven. And that team also looks that lineup also looks really yeah. really strong. So I have, personally, I have the villains at number three, just ahead of the numbies. I think this team 
is uh, I think people were sleeping on it after the draft, but I think kind of as we we looked at teams more, I think people realized that this team should be really good. Put the villains. One. Put the villains in A for attendance. What does that mean? <laughs> if they show, if they, oh, they show, show up, up, yeah. It's A for attendance. If you show up, you'll be good. I mean, a lot of these That's that cupcake factor. That is that cupcake factor. Does oh. he remember his team as a game that night? Oh so. yeah. Um, another one that like I think is they're a very talented team, but I think we we're just talking about this before. Um, I don't know what legal roster they run. Is the the Inazuma? Is that how you say it? Yeah, you know, I think so. Iga Inazuma. Yeah, they're a very talented team, but I don't know what SR they would run. So like our projected one, right? Or not even our projected one. Their um, I guess their comfort picks would be PJ Tank, Vic Hawks, uh, Elliot DPS, Cello Guy Paradox Support, and that's what is that? Almost two hundred SR over. So. Like, that's a yeah. really good lineup, but they won't be able to run that because it's going to be over SR. Um, I... Do they put... They have Naga. Does Naga go in there? Does that is fit? still over Naga SR. Naga over, too. I think by Unless they put 20. Naga in for Cello Guy, and they run Naga Paradox. They, so... Yeah. That's still over. That's Grim still Bucks. over? Scrimbucks. Scrimbucks yeah, alert. So what happened is that... I want to say Naga played full-time. He didn't sit out a map, I don't think. Same with Paradox and Vikovs. But... I mean, Shell guy was out map one because he was late, and um, they mainly just cycled um, etc. and PJ out even. So um, yeah, yeah, like, and they even tried stuff like um, Naga Sig, which looked really good as well. Um, like with Paradox DPS, which did really well. They played a sort of sim style with that but i feel like if they're able to build around the the genji from vikovs and like because charlie guy's main hero is anna at yeah. least he's known for so i can see it doing good they have a i'd probably put them like i probably put them towards like the bottom of b for now because we don't know what roster they're really going to yeah. run like but if we right look the at the, if we look at the upcoming meta where it's going to be dive centric i can see the vikovs genji going crazy yeah. again yeah and PJ can play every tank in the game yeah, too, so that true. definitely helps. Mm -hmm. So my only really concern is, um, etc. His tracer or his hero pool is really like long range hit scan kind of. Yeah. So how does it work into a dive centric meta? But that could just and, be completely negated by him going bastion or something. So I know he's a, le a lot less seasoned, and even I think Raiders he played a lot of Sombra, as well. But I don't know if he's played it very much before the, I mean after the rework. So, I know he's usually keen to play that character, though. Yeah. Could I work. don't think it's it's unreasonable for for him to pick up Tracer either. Yeah. I don't think it is either. Yeah. I'm just I'm just from what we know of him so far, is he's very prominent in snipers. His Tracer mm -hmm. can work, but but the uh, the results are yet to be seen. Another team that I have like questions about exactly what lineup they're gonna run, just because I'm kind of. Uh, confused about like what roles everyone's gonna play is the the moonlight foxes moonlight is it moonlight <laughs> yeah. or moonlight 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 foxes, moonlight yeah. foxes. um yeah it's gonna be very interesting with that team I don't know exactly what they're gonna run um I have concerns on who's playing tank on that team yeah. with the SR it's it's um, shifted it's just like fifty fifty Drew Nort from what I hear and it's Fedora maining dps still or is he going his support route that he wanted he's mainly going so i think he said he's mainly going support unless his team can't kill anything that he's going dps mm. gotcha so basically it's hv sec transflect dps with strudel fedora support is their preferred roster right that's kind of what we're going for the norton no nothing, so but... so it's probably wow. i i assume it's going to be transflect and drew like sort of rotating on the bench where they would be Drew Tank, and then it'd be HV Nort DPS. Drew Tank, so, yeah. yeah. So you just rotate, like, with that lineup you said, Transfect for Nort. But I could see that. I personally... I know Drew has been looking to prove his tank. I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but I always feel like, every time at the beginning of the season, I always feel like teams that have strengths at support and weaknesses at the other roles are always... um a lot more risky than teams that have like 
really like high SR tanks and then like weaknesses at support. That's just what I've noticed is that like if you're gonna have an SR sync, it's better to have one at support. Um, so a lot of times when I see teams that are kind of built like the the foxes where you have a really good support line, uh, and then kind of a weaker um, tank and DPS relative to the league, it, that always like worries me. Uh, like the guinea pigs, for example, last season. SR wise, yeah. Like last season, you had Corey and Riddle Dog support, and that was like super. That was like the best support line of the league, and then they just weren't able to get wins. The wet yeah. noodle team, yeah, I think as we referred to them. So where we're going? I would. I, I think the the highest R support lines can work if you have a really good tank, um, who's like really really flexible. Yeah. Otherwise, it can it can be difficult. I think that's um, why I'm worried. So about we'll the see. Boxes because I'd we'll have see. them C for now. Probably above I just want brutals, right? Yeah, I just I put them above first because it supports. Um, but. I just want to see this roster I know, I'm play gonna... once or twice to see. Yeah, I'm very curious to see how this works team. because I mean, if Fedora tilts to DPS, they can be fine. But again, at that point, Fedora's tilted, and then there's other problems and there. And so. Jover. <laughs> I've got yeah. a, a little bit of scrim books from this team, yeah. um, and I think this team is actually good. I, um, I would have be them... surprised if they were good. Oh boy, I have them at number five in my power really? rankings. Really. Um, I think at the end of the day, the comms and just like uh, basic like g gameplay understanding of this team is actually really really good, regardless of um, concerns about like oh is their their tank line good enough is their DPS line good enough that they will find ways to win games. Yeah. Um, and I think they're they're just gonna be one of the teams that actually plays the game properly and they're gonna get wins because of it. Um, I think this is a really big boomer bust. Like yeah. this team could either explode yeah. and just pound. Or it could all go downhill fast. Um, I hope it pounds. That's as someone who has played on a team with uh, Connor before. Um, he is especially on support where you can like kind of make more calls. Um, he is a, a very knowledgeable player, um, and he is. I don't know if this is the right word, but he kind of micros people, um, but like in a good way. So he like calls rotations. He like tells people where they should be like setting up and everything. Um, and I could see that being very good because Drew is one of those people that's like. Uh, really uh, receptive to getting any sort of like input or coaching, so I think that mm -hmm. also could be a very good um, Matt, a good like uh, duo there. I guess is that I think Fedora and Drew or for Fedora will just help Drew improve, so I think that could be very good for their team too. I also think that Fedora will not be counter called on this team because um, HPSec literally speaks zero words, and Strudel is very decisive in his comms. Yeah, so I think. Fedora will be able to do his main calling like he wants to, and the team will be receptive to it, yeah. which he hasn't had in a while, which I think would be good for him. But yeah, I, I think this team has a lot of potential, but they also uh, could underperform. Mm -hmm. So I have, in my opinion, I I don't know if I would put them as C. I might put them in like low B, but... Um, we'll see how the rest of it yeah, shakes out. I have more faith think... in other teams right now. The order is what matters. The tiers don't matter at all. Yeah, I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, since we haven't seen any, um, so I'm trying to I'm trying to save these three for last. So the gangsta turrets. Where do you guys put them? Let's see. I I put them right above the foxes. Personally, right above the foxes. So like C tier. Yeah, that's, a, a, B, that's yeah. a round where I'd have them. Yeah. Top of C, bottom B for um, now. In my... I had these guys Grimbucks kind of low inbound. For the, for the basic for... reason that I don't know if this is going to be a tryhard team. I don't this know. Like it could be a, like a for fun kind of squad. This, like, oh, we're going to play. Seems want. like it could be just a for fun team. Who knows? I mean, like, I think Fish is probably pretty uh, competitive and yeah, so is like, so we could win. So we could see this team being better than that. Um, I think if they if they end up being a team that wants to scrim a lot and be um, productive in that in that way, I think they could actually be pretty good. I just don't really know yet, um, and so I had them low for that reason. We will get flaws in DPS again, though. So that's fun. True. From from what I hear, like I think it was draft day when it was assumed that it's gonna be a for fun team. Like this team does not want to scrim at all. Maybe like two or three times this season total. Yeah. So um, 
they're sort of just hanging out, I think. If they get their one, then that's really all they need. And um, I think Fish said he and Negative Marvin, or Elizabeth's BF, might just show up, like, cooked half the time. Yeah, yeah. So, I just, know. like, looking to have they a have, good time. They have not typed in their team chat I'm gonna since move, November 22nd. I'm going to move so. the foxes above the turrets. Actually, I might move the the imposters above the turrets with, with mm. that info. I'd still have. But we don't know. I feel like it, once they get their yeah. their one, until they get their one, I feel like they're gonna really. If they show up, they're gonna try. It's not yeah. like they're just gonna go up and show up and just throw. So an, another there, there's thing, no reason to do that. Another if, thing if about their if you, team is uh, yeah. a lot of times when I see rookies, I am very skeptical. Skeptical, but you have people this season like Danny Mac, uh, who has a big shiny number next to their name. Um, uh, if I see like a rookie that's four K, I'm like, okay, they're they might be really good. I don't know anything about the law or Elizabeth BF. So negative so. Marvin is a I think high masters flex support player, off running the DPS. Gotcha. I'll but say like three nine or three eight or something. I a lot of times rookies I am just um, early on before I see them play I always like to underestimate them because it's R riddle. It's funny funny you say that because I. I think if I remember correctly, the law is a uh, former hitscan DPS player who is transitioning over to flex support. Really, really? that's really good. And on a main. Uh, yep, that's funny. Uh, actually, actually, mm, yeah, I probably would have the foxes above the or below them then. Now that I'm actually looking at it, I I feel like if the turrets show up and they're all in a good mood and they start winning, then they're, you're not going to be able to stop them. Yeah, yeah, but if if you like catch them out and they're not having a good time, then it's like it's a team that just like sort of vibe. Yeah, I, I feel like right I, now early season, you can't really just doubt that fish and them are just gonna show up baked and not try at all because they're still gonna want to win. You know, we we all yeah. know fish is a very competitive person. Another question I have since we were talking about this earlier: if we do enter a dive meta. Fish is kind of known for those brawl tanks. Um, it will be very interesting to see if he is uh, willing or able to switch over to dive. Fish has a Winston. He's a main tank. Kind of yeah, he has a Winston. Yeah. Yeah. They do have one fallback, and that is playing Rusty Goomba on tank for like oh, a map. I didn't think about that. He doesn't want That's to the worst. Worst tank. comes to worst. I, but he thing said he would, he would play it once in a while for them, so maybe we'll see him play like four map support one map tank or something if if i were to guess i think it could very be very possible that they will just be like the mice and just force rush uh force like a ryan brawl uh i can see it. that that might be really good into dive that might be like a counter to dive so they could still try to just force that and it could be good um but yeah that's another thing, too, that we were talking about earlier. A lot of the teams, I feel like part of the reason they feel so balanced is because I don't know what any of them are going to do. A lot of yeah. questions about some of these teams here. Uh, I think I know what the next team's going to do. Yeah, there are uh, three teams left <laughs> that are our three teams. Um, which team are you referring to, Nutty Earth? What do you mean? Uh, I'm talking team? about the Brawlers. The Brawlers, okay. Where do you guys... Uh... I think this team's going to play a lot of Reinhardt. I don't know about you guys. They would never... <laughs> yeah, J is it J E six eight five? J E, I think it's just calling him J E. It's J -E. just J E. Okay. Um, have him yeah. B. B for brawlers. B for brawlers. I have them kind of in the middle. I have them like mid, but like maybe a little bit lower mid. Um, I have them number seven. Yeah, that's about where I put them. Is like seven or eight. Um, I have a lot of. So, coming out of last season, this is like the majority of the Ewoks and the majority of the, the Pinguinos from last season, which it, is really funny. It's Ewoks meets Chimps plus Elko. Yeah, Elko is like the... Featuring Elko. That's a, that's a good player to like get as just a plus one to your yeah. team. Oh, yeah. Um, when you look at the two teams from last season, I feel like the Brawlers are like the Pinguinos uh, with a better support line, and then they're like the... Um, Ewoks with Elko. So I think they're kind of an upgrade from both of the teams from last season, but just last season they both finished really low. So I would, in my head, I'm like, they're better than, what was it, like bottom four last season? So I have them like in the middle, but like still a little bit on the low side just because of the last season for these teams. The fact they got let go for $1,000, kind of yeah. ridiculous. 
Wait, I got some good name. Allegro. Oh, Allegro. Allegro. I think he said Elko, and I'm like, they didn't get Elko. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at, at that point in the uh, draft, yeah. uh, every other team had their starting DPS line yeah. drafted, except yep. the Brawlers. So uh, no one was looking to get the, the substitute yet. So like, 1K for mid masters to DPS player. Yep. Um. Yeah, I I feel pretty like I I feel like I know what they're gonna do. I feel like they're they're one of the safer teams i think i don't see them like being they won't be bad i don't they see them won't being top two league. or bottom two yeah yeah which i think they uh, can pull an upset or get upset they're they might be perfectly balanced I, I, they might just be the, <laughs> I, the I, team i completely forgot about this um not only is ej gonna play tank i think poke only signed up for support that's correct so we have uh, three players who are signed up for a single role wait i think no four right Really? EJ Four? can only play tank. No, he has Elko... tank DPS. Oh, he okay. Oh, Elko yeah. and Allegro can only play DPS, and Poke can only play support. Okay, so that's which leaves uh me and Sonic Ronic as the flex gods flex, of the team. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... which means Sonic Ronic will be flexing around. When in doubt, nuttier Reinhardt or nuttier legs on Circuit Royale. Nuttier junk rat. Um. Because you can't, you can't even. Yeah, the nuttier like, legs oh. on Circuit Royale is undefeated. So I'm just gonna... let you know that. <laughs> I'm assuming you guys will not be playing any dive. Oh, I we will be playing dive. Really? With Sonic, yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, and Asha. even EJ, I yeah, heard. I, I think it's, it's actually going to probably be EJ Winston. Um, I thought the meme was that he only best plays Reinhardt. Support is Ana, so uh, we Scrimbox say we are actually not a bad dive team. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. Yeah, no, that, that that would make sense. I I didn't know you had people that could play dive tanks, so that's yeah new info for me. So yeah, that, it also that lets be uh, Elko play Genji or Farah or yep. Echo something like that. So, um, let's do uh, let's do the Gatos next. Where do you guys put the Gatos? Oh, they're an interesting squad, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, we are. Um, I got a middle of the pack. I'd put you right above or right below the Brothers. I, had I put them him right I, above the ballers. I put him right above brawlers. That's where I personally have us too. I have the villains a little bit lower, so I have us like behind these four teams. Um, but after your 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 discussion about the 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 villains, I could see us being right below them. So I think this is a reasonable spot for us. Um, yeah, I think any season it's very hard to bet against the Chloe tank. Um, even, we, we don't know I mean, how much she's trolling, though. No. Uh, Take it to playoffs, and you can bet against her. But so yeah, true. <laughs> um, scrim bucks are good um, against dongers. Uh, yeah, but the I think the team mental was pretty good. It seemed like everyone was really trying. Um, mm -hmm. I think a lot. This of team don't give gets our... Paige a win. Yeah, that's all that matters. Like, well, I think 100%. I don't care if you guys go one and. One, one in, in a billion, but as long as you get the yeah. one, you've already had a successful season. I think people I remember don't... the last time you said that. Yeah, you are the chat. People don't respect the. Goddess Surely this team can't enough. go winless, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Surely. HP BBQ. This team cannot go winless. <laughs> Map eight banger. <laughs> yeah, Unfortunately, yeah. they turned into like the third best team in the league at the worst possible time when they had to play the two yep. teams in the finals yep. come end of season. <laughs> rough um yeah i think our dps line doesn't get enough credit um yeah i i think because i just mentioned this last season that yak um in the regular season finished first finished second and then finished third so now he's uh he's finishing Five, fourth. fourth yeah um which is like that's close to where they are right now um and then whalefish whalefish um uh, he was talking about this earlier he's been on uh teams that have not been performing well the last couple of seasons but i think every season has not been his fault i think he's been He's been playing really well, even if the teams aren't getting the wins. But I think he's had a, he's still a very strong player. His Anzo is always good, and his Tracer slept on. So yeah. going in next meta, he'll be good. Yeah, I, I think if you can uh, get a comp that forces Willfish on Hanzo, he's gonna succeed. Um, also, I did it, it, like a couple months ago. If you were to say this, this would have been crazy. But um, the Gatos have a, a player with a season three uh, championship, and it's not Angel; it's Zenu Baba. All right. Yeah. Hype. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, last but not least, Chernobyl Chinchillas. Well, I mean, I mean, maybe least. Yeah, maybe least. Yeah, I think we put a below. Wow. 
I, I have this team right above Gatos. Yeah. I can agree with that. I know. can agree. I, I have these yeah, three agree. I have these three teams like all and I personally have the, the the foxes in this little group here, but um I won't know until I see either the Gatos or the Chantillas actually play matches, but I think they're very close yeah. in skill. Um Let's see, let me where's your where did your team go? We're oh third one from the bottom row. row. Um I'm excited to see Zeus play DPS again. I think regardless of how your team does. Yep. I think regardless of if you're good or bad, I think everyone on the team is gonna have a very fun season. Also, you, you, yeah. So two things. One, we got the the League of Legends out. It's out of here. He's now Sly. Sly. Mikey paid ten dollars for him to no change way. the game back. Mikey yeah, paid him ten dollars. That's really good to change it back to Sly. And also, I mean, I feel like everyone on the team on our team is really positive. Yeah. As well, there's not many people. I feel like me and like maybe Skys are like the biggest people who can boom or tilt, which is saying yeah. a lot. I think. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of the people on your team are very chill. Um, <laughs> they also Chillous. a lot of the people on the team, your team also um, are willing to 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 put in effort. You know, comms are going to be great. Um, a lot of team synergy here. I know, well, let's see, Riddle and Mikey have played with each other. Riddle and Booney have played with each other. Um, Me and Mikey played with each other. You and Mikey. Yeah. True, true. A and the dives, of... the dives were looking a lot better as well, Scrim Bucks. Dives were looking a lot better than, than the Newts back in Season 1. So. Yeah, we don't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they couldn't have gotten any worse. I mean, we, we literally would have had, like, uninstall Overwatch for it to get worse. So, but yes, I will say that. Oh. They were looking clean, and plus we have a new dive. We have a new dive call coming in. Yeah, we do. We got it going in our. Is that Chilla Chinchilla's voice texture? You got Dak Prescott leading the charge. It is. For you? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you guessed it. But yeah, no, that's. I think that's a pretty fair spot. I I think the 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 question is, I'll say it is me on a dive tank, but you also get Mikey on a tracer meta. So I think being like mid is pretty good for us right now. I think so. If, if I feel like, especially if Booney puts in the work, and like we all put in the work, and we're able to adapt, overcome, you know, it's we're able to. The power. Yep, exactly. I feel like if we really look to improve and just play around that, then we can really get our stride and be super, super good. I am out. For me here. personally. I per so I'm I'm looking at it right now. The overall, um, do you guys think there's any like adjustments we should make at all? Me personally, I like villains higher, but that's just me. Over, I I like the uh, foxes more than yeah. where we put them. Where I put but... you can put foxes over ganks. Or... Yeah, foxes over turrets, just because I think I think the foxes have enough players that they want to try. So they'll be yeah. at the end of the season trying harder. <laughs> um. I, I am biased, uh, but I would put the Gatos over the Chinchillas, but I would still have them next to each other. Um, but since there are two Chinchillas, I know I will not win that argument. <laughs> I I think that if the Gatos and the Chinchillas played each other right now, I think the Gatos would win. I don't know any scrim bucks from you. I just know that you beat the Dongers. Yeah. So, and you don't... I think you said you don't you haven't seen any gameplay from us either. You've just yeah. heard stuff. So. I think if there was a way in the cheer maker to have the teams literally be on top of each other, it would be that. Yep. I don't think either of us are better or worse than the other. We yep. might be perfectly balanced. And then right next to us, you just have the brawlers yep. <laughs> being <laughs> also perfectly balanced with everything else. So, mm -hmm. I can agree with that. I have, everything else is pretty close. I I am a villains hater. Um, I, I I put them lower, but Riddle is adamant. So, what were you saying? I think they can. Uh, do we have the is the Inazuma a little high without knowing what their comp is? I I have I mean, Inazuma at eleven on my own. Really? I was kind of thinking that they're high. What? I mean, I the, where I put them? I mean, I just put them right under us. But I don't know. I feel like I was watching the scrim and they look like they're they performed pretty well last night. Who did, like who individually, last each night? player, uh, imposters. But oh, I was looking at, oh. I was also looking at like the macro and just like how each player was like mechanics, and everything, you know. 
yeah. like playing I'm, together. I'm just and comms, I hear. They're so yeah. far over SR. But, uh, That's but they're finding weird. comps to work. I Are think... they? Because he didn't yeah. own SR cap. He so Versus the but it, they're getting it to work. They're getting Most it to work at least. Comps that's under SR, do we know? Yes. How about this? How about I was this, checking bro? it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the villains high, but we move the Inazuma down. That's a win-win for me. <laughs> I mean, you said, you, you said you'd had them high. I said I, I said I had them one lower than where they are now. I mean, I'm fine oh. with bringing them lower. Like here or below? You got you to put them both to get them right next to each other. Yeah. Yeah, they have, they have to be next to each other, so. And I think they're better than the brawlers just with flexibility so, at the moment. Now that I, I just realized this, um, you have the vanillas at four and you have the gatos at tied at fifth. The vanillas? The, not the vanillas, the V team, the villains. Um, at four, and you have the Gatos at six. They play each other tomorrow, so that's gonna yeah. be a a very. I think that's gonna be a very hype game. Should be a good game. Um, Should be. So yeah, you guys are happy with this? For preseason, we can't do much worse. Know, also, yeah. Mick, yeah. can you change the uh, the tier name of D to Dong so they don't think we actually, oh, actually they're the worst team in the league? Because I yeah. don't think they are the worst team in the league, but we just put them in D for Dong. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, a lot of the tier breaks don't, I feel like, don't mean much yeah. anyways. So, I mean, especially when we, it's preseason. We haven't seen any games, like any actual games. Like, you can only take scrim bucks for so much. I think, what was it, Quaka, Quebec Quakas would always, like, win over the cantaloupes, supposedly, yeah. in, in oh, yeah, like, scrims. Yeah, so it, it's like, it's not all about scrim bucks. It's just yeah. how they actually perform when they want to show up. Well, week yeah. one is starting very soon, so we'll actually see how they're going to perform soon. I'm very excited for that, but um, yep. now with the power rankings done, uh, would you guys like to get in the next order of business? So I'm trying to think. Is there anything else other than... I, I think so. I think we just go straight into the unveiling. announcement. Sure, man. So... I don't think anyone here except for Booney knows the deet, so I'm going to let Booney take it away here. Sure. So this will be the first inductee into the Aurora Esports Hall of Fame. Uh, this should be a very prestigious award for somebody who stands out in the community uh, for their contributions in and out of the game. And um, that's really all I got. So I, I don't know. Drum roll best I can here. Wait, uh... Do you, have a, do you have a little Discord soundboard thing I can do? That's not a drum roll. <laughs> How's this? Good enough. Uh, so the inductee for 2023 is... Riddle Dog! Woo! Congratulations, Thank you. Riddle Dog. Thank you. It means a lot. I know I was, I was nominated by Booney as well. I'm... Happy I was able to. I'm happy I'm able to help out, do as much as I can for the, for the league because, like I I think I was writing in my admin sign up or whatever. Um, I've met so many good people and everything through the league. Even the two people I'm living with right now, um, MJ and Randy, I met them through Overwatch and this league. So, I don't know where I would be without it. So, yeah. Thank you all. Hooray! That's yippee! it. Congratulations. Oh, I got yeah. Yippee. Um. Yeah. I think with that, I think we're ready to wrap it up. Uh. This has been episode two. Uh. Smelly Goonies. Uh. We likely will have another one in maybe a, a week, maybe two weeks. Uh. We'll give an announcement out when we start to schedule it. But, um, we're looking to break the record for podcast with uh, four. Or the next episode we tie. We tie. I think we tie at the next one. Okay. The, the tie, yeah, with the Rialto Roundtable back season five point five. Did yeah, you we'll hit it. Have any like previous one, Booney? Podcast? Uh we did. We had Grand Plasters, but that was before Aurora, so don't worry right. that one. Yeah. Because that one that one might have had double digit episodes. Was it even before Gopher Watch or was that before Gopher Watch? Or like Oh, it might have been Yeah. Because we, we were originally an Overwatch League podcast, so that might have been before even Gopher Watch was there. Okay. Booney SPN doesn't count. Um, Booney SPN does not count. 
I heard a Sadly. rumor that might be coming back, but I don't know if that's actually. I will confirm that it is coming back after games are played for week one. Oh, let's I have go right now. So big announcement. Booty that's SP bigger than the Hall back. of Fame. Booty SPN returns. W. Uh, but yeah, that, that's about it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Um, tune in tomorrow at 9 p.m. for uh, the Villains versus the Gatos match one of uh, season four. Um, yeah, yeah, again, thanks for watching. Have a good day, everyone.